Yesterday I attended the Remembrance Sunday service in central London, as I have done uh, for some years now. And it's a mixture of feelings that you get at this. Uh, part of it is uh, an admiration, uh, and a, an admiration for what it represents, what these people represent. They represent a, a love of this country, but there's a, a decency, an honour, a respect about them. There's a, an, ama an amazing discipline, uh, and it's the most, so, so wonderful to watch. It's wonderful to watch them together, uh, to, to how they operate and this loyalty they have to each other and to this country. It's, I had a lump in my throat yesterday, as I always do uh, when I go to this. But there's another feeling that I get uh, when I see these wonderful people who are just uh, who's, who's uh, given their lives to service, to the service of the country and to the service of each other. And that feeling is, I don't know quite the word for it, but I, I do think sympathy is the word. My heart goes out to them uh, because the politicians in the House of Commons simply don't deserve these wonderful, loyal, hard-working, decent people. The politicians in the House of Commons will send them out to die or to lose their limbs uh, without a second thought for their well-being. The House of Commons is so full of careerists and we can see that again today because you might have seen today that both Labour and the Tories are making all these promises for the armed forces. Uh, it's particularly uh, nauseating. It actually makes me angry. It's particularly nauseating coming from the Labour Party who are making all these promises and they do this on Armistice, Armistice Day. Uh, and then the rest of the year, they completely forget about the people of the armed forces. Labour's, as I say, is particularly uh, repulsive. It is, it's disgusting. We know what Jeremy Corbyn thinks of the armed forces. We know exactly. This is a guy who's on the extreme left, who, who has said that we don't actually even need an army. He has backed prosecutions of soldiers. And now, on the day, here he is coming out with lies and flannel. The Tories are not much better. Who, who has been in government over the last decade when British soldiers have been prosecuted? Who has it been? It's been the Tories. Who has it been when the, when the armed forces are decimated? Who has been in power? They have been cut and cut and cut, putting their lives in danger. It's been the Tories. They're no better than each other. I mean, the goal of Jeremy Corbyn is quite something, but we know from their records that they will do nothing for the armed forces. This is just talk. And I hope, I sincerely hope, that people don't fall for it. And I don't think that they will. You know, there was a time when I'd thought, seriously thought, about joining the armed forces. And there's something... I regret is not something that I do. I'm quite mm -hmm. proud of what I've done with my life so far. But I, there's one thing that I do think perhaps, and I, I felt it again yesterday, if I had my life again, one thing that I might do differently, and that is join the armed forces, uh, for at least for a significant period. I remember uh, years ago when I was at university, when I was living in Nottingham, I met a girl that it just randomly met her in, uh, in, a, in a pub on a Saturday night, a girl I'd gone to school with. And I was fascinated to hear that she had joined the RAF. And it was no picnic, she'd already been to Iraq. Uh, but you know, the, the, again with her, the service, the, the respect, the discipline, the decency, I wanted all of that. This, this, this service to country, service to something bigger, belonging, it's something, you know, it's, it, the military is something that people belong to, to commit to. It's all those wonderful things in life. I heard several times yesterday, um, you know, people saying there's no greater gift than to lay down your life for your friends. And that's what it's all about. It's about sacrifice and struggle and camaraderie and, and loyalty, and loyalty to this great country. So if I had my time again, I might actually join the, the, the armed services. It was the Royal Navy I had uh, on my mind that I was uh, going to join, but I think actually, if I had to go back, it probably would have been the RAF. But it's too late for me to join the armed services. So what I will do instead is fight for this country in a different way.
we have several members of our party who are ex-forces and I have spoken to many, many people. And as I say, my heart goes out to them. They, they, are, they, they, they are sent out to war zones, paid a pittance. When they come back, the services are not there for them. And even worse, they are sneered, by, particularly by the Labour Party. Uh, they, they have to live in often terrible conditions. Their family lives are, are, are completely disrespectful respected by these careerists in Parliament who don't give a damn about them. This is what I am here for. I am here to stand up for just these people. People who put their lives on the line for this country. I love this country. It's given me everything I value. It's given me the very best years of my life. It's my home and I will fight for it. I can't do it in the armed forces, so I will do it by building a party from the bottom up that will give the armed forces someone, finally, who genuinely cares about them. That is our aim. That is our party. We will stand up for the armed forces in a way other parties won't. It's not just talk on Armistice Day. We will actually do it. We will do it for them. We will do it for the sacrifice they make. And we'll do it, of course, for Britain. Join us. Thank <laughs> you.